guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois Season 2. Today we're going to be talking about Episode 3, so this will be my review for the episode. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So, this episode was crazy. I absolutely loved it. I'm loving Superman Lois Season 2. I have a few nitpicks as usual, and... It pretty much applies to what I talked about last week because I had a couple of nitpicks and it kind of carried on to this episode but apart from that all the Superman stuff and pretty much everything else is really great right now and obviously let me know what do you think of the episode overall and the specifics you can go into spoilers in the comments down below because if you're watching this video you should have seen the episode because we're gonna be going into full spoilers so, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the start of the episode. So, Superman's in space. I guess he's trying to track down Doomsday, or who we've been led to believe is Doomsday, under the mines. But he pretty rapidly falls down from the sky and enters the atmosphere and crashes down. So, at this point, we're still led to believe that this is being caused by Doomsday and somehow they have a connection to each other. And so he can't look into the mines, like every time he tries to do that, his mind basically freaks out and he gets those terrible headaches. And so they think it could be a Kryptonian, well specifically John Henry Irons brings that up in the first place, obviously he has a lot of experiences dealing with evil Kryptonians and obviously Superman does now with Tal Ro from last season and even in last episode. So. It makes sense that they kind of presume maybe this person has some sort of link to Superman and that's why they are connected. But John Henry Irons volunteers to go down to the mines and that's part of his story this episode and somehow Natalie is linked into that. You know, she's a bit disapproving of him and I actually like Natalie. I think she's a very good character and I like how she interacts with the other cast members, especially, you know, with Jordan and Jonathan. I think she is really good with like everyone so I do like how she's being portrayed right now and especially how she ends the episode because still reveals look I need to be out there they need my help and she's like I'm not going to let you go out until we fix the suit I thought she was going to be like I'm not going to let you go out ever because you're my dad and you're not allowed to put yourself at risk but she's like, no, I realize you have to do this, so let's fix this damn suit. But anyway, that was a little segue to talk about Natalie and what she did later in the episode. But let's go back to the start. So we have Jordan who has his own secret. We have some little conversations about having secrets and having powers. And Jordan wants to reveal him being the son of Superman to Sarah. And this is again thanks to Natalie who intercepts their conversation between Jordan and Jonathan. And she comes up with the idea that, you know, it's not so bad that Sarah kissed someone else because really when you look at it, Jordan's secret is way bigger. And it's kind of true, so I did like the fact that they pointed that out. And so we go over to the Cushings, we have Kyle assisting Lana with running for mayor in Smallville. And obviously this is a big deal because they've never had a female mayor in Smallville and Kyle keeps on emphasizing that throughout this episode. And she gets some pushback later on when you have like this sort of town hall meeting and this is because people in the past haven't liked their dealings with her because you know she worked with Morgan Edge that is a big thing and she was recruiting them and so they don't trust her however with the help of Kyle and the help of the people around her she eventually finds a way to touch the people of Smallville by reaching out as a normal person, as a normal civilian of Smallville who knows literally all of them. And so this is through a live stream with Sarah. Thought it was quite nice, although I was like, hmm, this is not how live streams work. Obviously we know how live streams work because they were like, the questions are coming in and somehow they don't see her anymore. It's a bit weird that she wouldn't have been like, back in a minute, gonna read your questions. Anyway, that's like a tiny nitpick. It's not even a complaint. That's just like coming from a YouTuber, coming from someone who does live streams. And just as a reminder, guys, as I said yesterday, we are back to live streaming. So tune in this Thursday for my live stream. Don't miss it because we haven't streamed in two weeks because I was on holiday and I didn't have good enough internet to do it. So yeah, we are finally back for the new year with a new live stream. So looking forward to that. But anyway, let's continue on with this. So General Lame returns. He hasn't been in the first two episodes. So it's good to have him back. At first, he's on a green screen on a boat and I thought he wasn't able to come to Vancouver or something, but he actually does 
come to the actual set and he's with the rest of the cast in Vancouver. So I really, really like that they brought him back because I was wondering like, are they just going to throw away his character forever now that he's not General Lane? And now he's just like a normal dad and a normal person just living life. But no, he's back and he gives some very good advice. But the real reason he's brought back is to do with the story with Lucy Lane and Lois. And we're going to talk about that in a minute because that is probably my biggest nitpick of the entire episode and it was last week because there are some specifics that they haven't gone into and it's very confusing right now about what they're talking about because they're completely retconning Supergirl and everything that happened with Lucy before. So the fact that they're bringing back the same actor Jenna Darwin from Supergirl and completely retconning and rebooting the character even though Superman Lois is set in the Arrowverse it's very confusing and it feels a bit forced because you know how this version of Lucy in the Arrowverse was before she was not like this she was a badass she worked for the DEO and yes yeah, she had her struggles with her dad and with her sister as well but she wasn't a drug addict she wasn't anything like that so it feels a bit forced because they completely made it up and they retconned the character and yeah we have to get used to it but we haven't seen her yet and just all these references kind of turn me the wrong way but that's just me i don't know about you guys maybe that's because i was a fan of her and supergirl and i don't think this is such a good idea to go down this road so let's move on so superman is overcome by something as Jordan reveals that he wants to marry Sarah, he wants to be with her forever, and obviously Clark has a very strong reaction to that, but it's heightened by whatever is happening to him. So his heat vision goes crazy, and there's like a scary voice, his voice sort of goes all evil for a minute, and Jordan argues about, you know, what they're talking about, about revealing his identity to Sarah, and he's like adamantly saying no, but, you know, this rage is like enormously fueled by his anger, which apparently isn't his anger, and we'll get more into that as we go on, although nothing has been completely revealed apart from, you know, who the villain is of at least the first half of the season. But it's nice that Lois backs Jordan against Clark, and Jonathan's girlfriend also, after this, tells Jonathan that his teammate took X kryptonite, and so this is definitely a new drug problem for Smallville, and Jonathan's girlfriend is apparently selling it, and that is coming from the guy who's been taking the drugs. And obviously, X Kryptonite gives you advanced durability, strength, and all of that. So, remember last episode, we had that guy in Metropolis or somewhere who was selling it around, and it seems like everyone has somehow got their hands on X Kryptonite, including Jonathan's girlfriend, who is a dealer in Smallville. And so, by the end of the episode, Jonathan confronts her. You're thinking, oh, he's going to break up with her and force her to stop selling it. But no, in fact, he wants to buy some from her. He wants to be advanced just like his teammate. And this is going to have big backlash when Superman finds out about this. Because he is so adamantly and vehemently against anything like this. And especially anything to do with kryptonite. He's going to flip when he finds out. So, bad choice, Jonathan. Bad choice. Let's move on to the next thing. So we have the podcast story. Now, again, this is my biggest nitpick of the entire season so far. I absolutely unequivocally don't know what's going on. Like, I don't understand it. Yes, I've got my problems with the Lucy Lane stuff, but I have no idea what this podcast is about and what the article Lois keeps on referring to is about. I really don't remember. I think they've hinted at it a couple of times, but it's so shrouded in mystery and they haven't, like, revealed properly, like concretely, anything about this article that it feels very forced. I don't know if I'm missing out on something, like who is this alley person? Yes, they are an old acquaintance of Lucy and they used to do drugs or something and, you know, one girl died and Lucy nearly died because of this alley person. But we're getting all these references, but we're not actually getting any explanation about who these people are. And like, why is it such a big deal now? Obviously, it's quite relevant in terms of, you know, I guess the cancelling idea of different people. And loads of people love to talk about that. And yes, you know, it's a real thing, so it's fine to include it in the show. But I don't know how seriously I believe this. Like I said before, I feel like the background behind this story, if it was more believable and it didn't include a past Arrowverse character who we knew was completely separate and different from the person that we keep on hearing about that we haven't even seen and we don't even see in this episode, 
or get any flashbacks. Maybe if we had some flashbacks, it would be more believable. But still, I have no idea what this podcast is about. Like, I have zero idea. So I'm still annoyed that this storyline is happening. Maybe it will get better. I really do hope it gets better. But this is my biggest problem with the season so far. I'm really looking forward to talking about it with, like, Eric and everyone on, you know, one of the live streams this week because I don't know if I'm alone in this. I haven't done that much research into what people think online, so please be sure to go in the comments below and tell me what do you think about this Lucy Lane story that they've got cooking up? Do you agree with me? Do you completely disagree with me? What are your thoughts? I 100% need to know because I have no idea what other people are thinking and I'm thinking I'm going crazy right now, like, I have no idea what's going on apart from the bare basics. Okay, so let's move on. We have Clark who continues to freak out and he's, you know, continually blacking out and he's been taken over by Doomsday and his anger, as I mentioned before. And so John Henry Irons at the same time goes down to the mines. They find blood and quickly after, the person who was revealed to be working with someone who is wanting to release Doomsday, or so-called Doomsday, from under the mines hits him on the back of the head, knocks him out, and yeah, that's the end of John Henry Irons until he's able to get out later, and he calls his steel suit, and he has an epic moment that, you know, was just one of the coolest moments in the episode. I was like, yes, this is so cool. Like, his suit comes, he jumps into the air, and it goes around him, and he kind of saves Superman for a minute, and it was great. I loved that scene, and I think John was really strong in this episode. So I like the couple of lines we kept on hearing throughout the episode, emphasizing different villains and different things that could potentially be happening. So before Doomsday is revealed, we have Lois who says, now's not the time to go all Doomsday on me. After Clark says, it feels like the end of the world is coming. These were just some of the small little references in terms of, you know, literally naming Doomsday to try and hint towards that you know, the villain who's coming out from underneath the ground who is connected to Superman and is potentially Kryptonian is Doomsday. And so, you know, recently had information on different articles from the showrunner of the show who confirms it's Doomsday and we've been completely led to believe that this is Doomsday and I love the fact that they're using their marketing in terms of their interviews to push different narratives and actually shock audiences because he pulls a twist on us. He pulls a big twist on us this episode, and we're going to get into that in just a moment. But let's continue, because General Lang has a call with Lucy, who agrees to come and meet Lois. However, it turns out it's not Lois. It is the person from the podcast that you saw earlier, and she's come to expose Lois, pretty much. I don't know what else is going on, but it's pretty clear that it's going to be dramatic in the next episode when they come, you know, face to face and actually talk. And, you know, the fact that Lucy is probably going to go on this podcast, if Lucy has sent this podcast lady instead to talk to Lois for her. So at least we're seeing these people in real life and maybe we'll get some more explanation about what exactly is going on. But let's continue on from here because Clark is taken over and actually sees Doomsday for the first time. He sees the person in one of his headache flashes and he's in some sort of exosuit. And it's at this point that he actually breaks out of the mines. He lands and he's huge. Well, much bigger than like a normal person and that's mainly because of his exosuit because I think the thing inside of the exosuit is actually a bit smaller and it just seemed extremely big. And so the two of them have an all out fight and Doomsday, or so-called Doomsday, is able to fly, he has super strength, and pretty much is going to kill Superman. Like, you can tell he's extremely strong. I don't know if the exosuit gave him any extra strength. You would presume so, and there's probably a reason why he's in this exosuit, because he's been contained down there for a long time. We don't know what actually went down in the mines, but there is a reason why he was there all the time, and the person who was working on breaking them out definitely has something to do with like the rest of the season and I think that's going to be our link to who created this version of Bizarro. Yes, it's 100% confirmed this is a Bizarro version of Superman and we've seen Bizarro before in the Arrowverse in terms of Bizarro Supergirl 
created by Maxwell Lord and you know that was in season one so that was really cool but it's nice to see this absolutely scary looking version of Bizarro on Superman Lois and so as Bizarro pins Superman to the ground backwards because you have to remember Bizarro is the complete opposite of Superman he speaks in reverse but some people online reversed it and what he says is leave me alone and with this you can presume because he also gets the headache at the same time as Superman that they are literally linked. Someone has stolen Clark's DNA and somehow connected the two of them because they are supposedly maybe siblings or like kind of relatives now that you know they've used Superman's DNA is my best guess because that's what normally happens to create Bizarro but Bizarro is just as powerful or even more powerful as Superman but he doesn't actually have the same weaknesses. He has some different weaknesses because John Henry Irons tried to use some of his solar flares against him, but it didn't affect Bizarro beyond just kind of destroying the suit a little bit. Like it didn't hurt him at all. And so they both get headaches at the same time. And you're like, hmm, this is actually interesting because you thought that Doomsday, as we originally thought he was, so actually Bizarro was the one causing Superman's headaches. But in terms of that, it's both of them, and they both want each other to leave them alone. And so I really like that they're kind of on the same playing field, and Bizarro isn't like necessarily going straight after Superman as a villain, but he has his own reasons, and he's literally trying to break out of this place, because he's been trapped here for however long he's been trapped there. And so I love this version of Superman, and there was one of those lines again, where General Lane says, a bizarre version of Superman, you know, literally calling out the name Bizarro and calling out Doomsday. We had two lines like that in the episode. And so, yeah, the solar flares do nothing against him. He goes away after he gets the headache. He flies and we don't see where he goes until the end of the episode. But let's move on. So we have Jordan who goes to Sarah and he gives her his grandmother's necklace and it's super touching I love that scene I do really like how they resolve their problems and it's clear that yeah for now we'll see how it goes but it's gonna be quite a long time it seems that they're going to be together but Jonathan obviously is having some big troubles right now in terms of himself and you know not being picked on the football team because it's a huge deal to him it's like his entire life right now football 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 and he has his girlfriend and so he goes to his girlfriend's house like I said and he reveals that he wants to take X kryptonite to become you know more powerful and to become a better football player but there's definitely going to be side effects I wonder if Jonathan's side effects is if he takes X kryptonite is he going to somehow enhance his Kryptonian side of himself and is he gonna start displaying powers that will obviously go away after he stops taking X Kryptonite but will it stick around because it's maybe going to ignite his Kryptonian side of himself that's just a theory that I thought of literally a minute ago and I think it's pretty good and this could be the way that we see Jonathan start to exhibit powers and so Lucy Lane like I said earlier doesn't show up where she's supposed to meet with Lois in the diner in Smallville, it's the podcast lady, and so that storyline's gonna continue. I hope it gets better. But the final scene of the episode is amazing, and I totally freaked out. We see Bizarro for the first time, not inside that exosuit, but in fact, just himself in the Fortress of Solitude. Now, I'm pretty sure this is Clark's Fortress of Solitude, but in reverse, he says, home, and that's his final line. Like, if you guys thought he was saying something random, it was actually in reverse, and he literally just says home. So, he recognizes it, and maybe he has his own version of the fortress, or so he thinks he does, because remember, most versions of Bizarro are actually manufactured by someone, and that someone is going to be the mastermind behind this season, I would say. That person is going to be the true villain, and Bizarro is going to be, like, the physical threat right now, and we're going to see more of him. But I'm very interested to find out who actually created Bizarro and who's working behind the scenes. And so in terms of Bizarro's suit, he's got the normal Superman suit, but his emblem is inverted. It's the opposite way around and he has a shredded cape as well, along with blue glowing eyes and he speaks backwards. And so I think the icing on top of the cake is the fact when it goes black, 
it goes to the Superman Lois logo, but they play it in reverse. I thought that was extremely cheeky, and they know what they've done, and it's a huge reveal, and everyone freaked out about it last night, and I can't wait to continue talking about this, as I'm so excited to see what happens next with Bizarro, because they totally duped us, thinking it was Doomsday, but instead, it's Bizarro, and I can't be more excited. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new to not miss any future videos. But for now, you can click on the top right corner of the screen, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see.